Hey guys, welcome to the channel. Sorry it's been a while. This video has taken a very, very long time to make. Murao, I mean, he looks pretty simple, but he is a complicated judoka. And we're going to break him down, have a look at everything he does. I definitely learn a few things, and you probably will too. So first, briefly, we'll just have a look at all the attacks that he likes to do. And if you don't know, Murao, he is all Ashiwaza. Here's one of his strongest techniques, his Ujimata. He mixes it well with an Ochigari. As he blends them together, like this one here, it's kind of a starts as an Ochigari, ends as an Uchimata. Of course, there's the Osotogari as well. But one thing I learned in making this video is he's got these big techniques, but he's also got a lot of foot sweeps that he does. Just a huge variety as well. A lot of counters. So there's a Tsubame Gaishi here. Nice little Kochigari. Does that a lot. Left, first, right. A couple of clips here of a Nidan Kosoto. And look at the lift he gets on this one. So you know, a lot of people, they kind of think Uchimata or Sotogari, but it's these little things, you know, just putting people on the floor and he stands standing. Might not get him a, a score a lot of the times, although this one does, but for the most part, I think it just keeps him looking aggressive and keeps him ahead on the Shido game. Alrighty, left first right. If you didn't know, Murao, he is a left-handed fighter. And the way he fights left first right versus left first left is totally different. Just showing this clip here against Palati to kind of illustrate that, but he takes a really slow, kind of methodical approach. Have a look at the sleeve work. I think he's borderline got some pistol grip sometimes, but a lot of the time he's, he wants your sleeve and doesn't want you to have his. With his lapel hand, he's generally taking an undergrip. And this is just a really good defensive option, although he does launch his attacks from here as well. But just look at the defense. Still on two feet, just squishes that Uchimata attempt. And sometimes he does take a top grip, very rarely though, he does here against Bobanov. I'm not too sure exactly why. Maybe Murao, if you're out there, you can comment in the comments, but... Takes a top grip here, but even then, he's still keeping his lapel hand relatively low to be defensive. And one thing that that does is it kind of invites people to take a top grip, and then he'll launch a counter-attack. So watch here, he's got the top grip, but he's keeping his lapel hand low. Blue goes over the top, and then he launches in for the Ochigari. There's one other thing he does defensively before we get into his offense. Left first right. And I feel like it's a Tokai University thing. A lot of people take this grip. I guess you'd call it a, a collar grip from the back. So he's quite confident to take this grip in defensive situations. But he also throws out a Tanya Toshi. And he gets a score with it quite a lot. Okay guys, we're about three minutes in. I think I better reveal the big secret now to Manal's game. So watch Manal's foot right after this also Daddy. His right foot. There. This back step is everything. So first it sets up this little kochi, makes people want to step forward. You know, a good offense is a good defense, so even in these situations, a little bit of a spin, goes in for an attack. And this is probably the best example. Blue takes a big hand over the top, but Murao rotates with it and turns it into a beautiful Uchimata. Have a look at it again, there's the big hand, the rotate, the back step, that inside grip that he likes, and maybe also a bit of pistol grip. And also, backstepping to kind of prevent big hip techniques like this. This is a great way to defend. Left first right, stepping back like that, using the inside elbow, it's good stuff. So the backstep, it gets a little bit more complicated, and I'll explain it here. So imagine when he backsteps, he could stop and launch an attack on any of these lines. So sometimes he's swinging 180, sometimes he's cutting a, a close corner. But this is where the magic begins, and this is where I think people get thrown quite a lot, because they're not quite sure what to expect. Because, I mean, sometimes he's just repositioning. Sometimes he's launching an Ochigari. Sometimes he's launching an Uchimata. And he's only done half a backstep. Then you might think, okay, I'm going to watch out for the backstep. And he comes out with a, a Tanya Toshi. And then he's backstepping. And then he's stepping behind your feet. And you're not too sure, is he going to backstep? Is he going to do Tanya Toshi? What is he going to do? This is a, a great little sequence that just kind of puts it all together, I think. You know, a lot of movement. Low lapel hand, elbows down, defending well, using the back step, and then just waiting for the opportunity, launching him for the Ochigari. And of course there's the Ashiwaza that I talked about at the beginning of the video. So he's just putting people in a predicament of thinking about too many things. And the last thing I'll say left versus right, if you put the wrong foot forward, you're going to pay with an Osotogari. I'm pretty sure Maizarazi is a right handed fighter, but I don't know why his left foot is forward. But Morao, he eats this stuff up all day. Usually left versus right, it's Uchimata, Ochiyori, and Samashiwaza. But if you put that wrong foot forward, 
you're going to get attacked with an Osotogari. So Becker here briefly puts his foot in the wrong place. Morao attacks. No score, but still. And in this last clip, just watch how Morao forces his opponent to put his left foot forward. Just a little bit of forward pressure, a little bit of pushing him. He should have hopped back, but instead Morao pushes him. He takes a step back with his right leg. And that was the perfect opportunity for Morao to go in. So that was left first right guys. Next up, left first left. So left first left, very different story to left first right. Morao is much more aggressive with his gripping, breaking grips, looking to grip and go, attack quickly. He's not very patient and slow and methodical in left first left situations. So you can kind of see here like Harry likes to do things, looking for all sorts of grips, cross grips specifically. He does a lot of work off the lapel, double lapels. But you can just see here that he's not really comfortable settling. But still, he manages to find a way that works for him. I think he does struggle a little bit when people get a top grip on him, which we'll see shortly. But for the most part, he's looking to grip and go. And when his opponent gets two hands on him, he likes to just attack first and get out of there as quickly as possible. So as I said, he does struggle a little bit with this top grip. He does the Ono Shohei thing, putting the arm in the armpit. And of course he relies on his Ashiwaza to kind of get out of these situations. And another thing he does to kind of stop the big hand going over the top is taking a cross grip, and you can see it here. So he's heavy on the sleeve, taking that cross grip, and from there he likes to look for all sorts of goodies. And I have to say his off the sleeve, or cross grip sleeve, all sorts of goodie has to be probably one of the best in the game. And you know someone's got a good all sorts of goodie when they can do it from this situation. This kind of extreme left on left setup that people find themselves in a lot even right versus right this is a very 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 common setup and people go for all sorts of goodies here but a lot of the time it doesn't happen but Morel he makes it happen and it's very very impressive so as I said a lot of grip and go so this time off the lapel going for an orchigari turning it into an all and again against the same opponent same grip but this time jumping in straight with the orchigari so from this grip here, I mean, he's looking for the Ochi, he's looking for a cross grip, sleeve, also the gari, and also an Uchimata. And he doesn't get it as often as he does in left first right situations, but I mean, it's enough to make him look aggressive and not get a shield to his name. But this stuff here, this is the bread and butter. Sleeve grip, also do. I mean, he's just so good at it. Here, double lapels, edge in the mat. Gets a sleeve, looking for a cross grip, looking again, and then goes in for the Osoto, doesn't get it, but enough to look aggressive, still dominating the sleeve grips, and there's that Ashiwaza again, and his opponent here looks like a right-handed fighter, but I'm pretty sure he's not, it's just Morao making him look like a right-handed opponent, just by dominating the sleeve grips, and when you do this, I mean, people look for other, other strategies here, looking for Double, double sleeves, but Morao takes advantage of it and just shuffles to the right, goes to the Osoto. And that one came easy, I mean he was just dominating the Kumikata so much. This sequence is interesting, just how he mixes it up. So cross grip into the Osoto, and then double lapel cross grip into the Ochigari. So he does well, left is left. With these two motions, the Osoto Gari and the Ochigari looking very similar, taking very similar grips. And you're just not sure which one's going to come out. Last thing from the Tachiwaza that I noticed. Ochi Kochi. He does this a lot. I'm not sure if this is also a, a Tokai University thing. I know Haga. Haga has a really nice Ochi Kochi. But Murao utilizes this a lot. Uchimata, Kochi there. I mean, he's mixing it up really well with the, the Ochi Gari, the Uchimata. Usually it's Ochi Kochi, but of course you can go Kochi Ochi as well. He has Uchimata, Kochi Gari. Sometimes he gets a score, but just a lot of the times he's throwing this out all the time. From what I saw, I mean, he does it a lot left versus right, but he also does it left versus left as well. And I do think it is a big part of his game. I mean, what's this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight situations here of Ochi Kochi. Here's just the Ochi Gari individually, and this time goes for the Kochi as well. And in this situation here, gets a beautiful score with it. Barely has any grips. I think that's just the one cross grip. But scores Epon, so that's great stuff. So, Ochi Kochi, a big part of Morel's game. 
And lastly guys, something that is not a big part of his game, Nawaza. These are the three little clips that I found of his Nawaza. Here he is looking for a Juji, maybe a choke. Doesn't quite get it. This one here, quite famous. Standing Juji, but he was in the right to do this and his opponent decided to stand up. The ref calls Mate, so that's totally fine there. Not illegal at all. And I've seen him do this rollover twice. Maybe he'll get it in the future, not too sure, but his Nawaza, not a strong point. So that's it guys, what do you think? Morel? So that's it guys, what do you think of my Morel breakdown? I think left versus right and left versus left, two different stories, very different approaches. And at the end, just putting some miscellaneous stuff, some fakes, some nice movements. Like these kind of, these kind of movements here, and also this entry into Ochigari. I quite like how he reaps the leg here. And lastly, this little combination here, Kosoto into Ojigari. I might try this one next time at training. Anyway guys, I'll see you in the next one. Peace!